It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide people with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is macular degeneration, and joining me is Dr. Fashnoff of the Eye Institute. Welcome, Dr. Fashnoff. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, uh, we did a show years ago, and it's uh, very... It, I can't believe that this much time has passed and it's passed so quickly. Of course, the older you get, doctor, the faster time passes. That is true. And yes, it, it was amazing. Last time we did it, it's such a wonderful way to spread yeah. information. I really enjoyed it. Well, folks, before the show, Dr. Vashnam and I were talking about the fact that uh, he asked me a question about coverage for our television and our other media sources. Uh, just let me say that what Dr. Vashnoff and I will be talking about will be archived on our website, available on worldwide YouTube. So if you have a friend that wants to, to know something about what Dr. Vashnoff talks about on macular degeneration, all they have to do is go to org, look at our website, and this show will be archived, and you can watch it anywhere in the world that they have access to the Internet. Right, and I think that's important. It's extremely important. Absolutely. But I told somebody that I have seven or eight questions here for you, and I want to make sure we cover all these questions. The first one is that you're a retina specialist and an ophthalmologist, but you have a passion for helping people prevent blindness. How do you do that, doctor? Well, thank you. That's a great question. It's one of my passions, as you mentioned. Um, the way you prevent blindness is... Um, important uh, with education. I have a, I get, I'll tell you a little story if I might, how Go I ahead. got into that. A, a few years ago, I had a patient that um, came to me and the patient had severe diabetes. And um, it was a young gentleman and he said, doctor, can you do anything to save my vision? He had young kids and he wanted to watch them grow older. And he had significant injury to the back of his eye and I explained to him what I would do for him. But it really bothered me because I could put myself in his shoes. If I was a diabetic and wasn't well taken care of, then I could have the same problem. And the, the concern that I had or what bothered me was everything wrong with his eye was preventable. Had he just had an eye exam a few years prior to coming to see me, had he had the appropriate things done and advised, then he would not be where he was sitting today and I would, I would have a much easier time saving his vision. So that got me to think about how do you prevent problems? With my specialty, with the retina, it's the retina people oftentimes don't understand, but the retina is part of the brain. It's the only part of the brain that sort of comes out of our skull and into our eyeball. It is attached directly to the brain. Those nerve cells are very delicate. What we're born with is all we have. They never grow back. You can't repair them. You can't replace them. So if injuries occur, they are sometimes irreversible and vision loss is irreversible. So that sort of got me to think about how do you prevent problems? And so I sort of developed a mnemonic I wanted to kind of throw out to the audience and I call it CARPE 2020. And, and so this acronym CARPE uh, C stands for um, catching symptoms early. Patients need to be aware of what symptoms you have and what symptoms you need to look for with certain conditions, and you want to catch them early. You don't want to put off the symptoms. You don't want to say, ah, it's just a little problem. I'll put it off. I'll go to the doctor next year, next year, because it may be too late. The A stands for raising awareness of um, your surroundings and being aware yeah of your family history, your genetics, because a lot of a lot of these diseases, Joe, are inherited. And if you know that your mother has macular degeneration or your father had macular degeneration, you know that you are at risk. So you need to right. do preventative things to make sure that you get assessed early enough so that we can catch problems. Some of these things you can catch early enough and stop the process and even if you can't stop the process, you can do things to slow diseases down. And that's important. Can you give me an example? 
Wait, wait, let's, okay, let's, 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 say, let's, say, let's say a person is 30 years old and they know they're a, di they're a diabetic. You know, they have a condition. It's not going to go away. You treat it, right? Correct. But what you're saying to me is that that person is diabetic. And by virtue of the fact he is diabetic, there are three, four, five, or six things, genes, or whatever you want to call it, that through a blood test, we could identify potential problems down the road. We could serve back behind them. Can you explain that? Sure. So diabetes is a very good example. Let's talk about diabetes. So one of the things that we now know, when a person gets diagnosed, diagnosed with diabetes, right. one of the first things that a primary care doctor now does is tells the patient, you need to have an eye exam. That's because up to a third of the patients don't even realize they have eye damage occurring. They didn't even know they were diabetic until they go to the doctor. Sometimes the eye exam is the first time they find out that they're a diabetic because we okay. see damage inside the eye. Now, like diabetes, like macular degeneration, damage doesn't occur instantaneously. It occurs over time. So in diabetes, for example, blood vessels become damaged over time. And over time, the amount of blood supply going to the eye decreases. So if you know that you're a diabetic and you get an eye exam and we can see the early changes in the blood vessels, then we can warn the other doctors and say, hey, look out for these problems. Interesting, uh, interesting thing about diabetes, Joe, is that, and this is a good example, because in a diabetic patient, the changes that are occurring in the eye are occurring in every other organ in the body. The unique thing about an eye exam, and talking about preventative medicine, is the eye is a window to a lot of diseases in the body. The eye is often a manifestation of many diseases. We have seen patients with tumors, with changes in the eye. I have seen patients with heart disease high blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid disease, lupus, you name it. There, there's a whole laundry list of diseases that present first in the eye. So prevention is just raising awareness, making sure that the patients get an eye exam. The other important component of this is talking to the other doctors. One of the, one of the things that I enjoy doing is communicating that information to their primary care doctors, and that makes them aware of what we're seeing inside the eye. So a lot of prevention starts with education, awareness, and early eye exams. Is what you're talking about now, is that one of the reasons or the reason why you uh, got this program, you started called Healthy Eye, Healthy Eye. And I, I thought, how can I explain to the viewers what I mean when I say Healthy Eye, Healthy Eye? It's healthy, E-Y-E, -E, healthy eye, meaning? Person. The person. Right. And Can you explain that a little bit? I, I, I want do. to know about it. Well, it was interesting. This I actually wrote an article uh, a little while ago re regarding the Healthy Eye, Healthy Eye Initiative. It's basically uh, making, raising, it's a grassroots program to raise awareness in patients that a healthy eye can lead to a healthy eye. That means getting an annual eye examination, checking for other systemic problems that we can detect by looking in the eye can help you. I'll tell you a story that we discussed a little while ago. When I first came to this area, I saw a patient of several years, it's been several years now, maybe about eight or nine years ago. And this patient came to me with vision problems. And I examined her and something looked odd about her eye. And so I asked her to get an MRI scan. And the MRI scan actually found a brain tumor inside her skull. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, the eye is connected to the brain. She went to the local neurosurgeons. They were not able to help her here. They felt it was right. too complicated, and they sent her to Shane's Hospital where the surgery was done. The great news is that she's alive today because we were able to catch something on an eye exam. It didn't. I didn't realize the importance of that. Even though I do eye exams every day, it really hit me home when she came back to me a couple of years later and explained her whole story to me as to what happened after I saw her. And it really got me to thinking about prevention and about detecting things early in the body. So the Healthy Eye, Healthy Eye initiative through education, empowerment of patients, um, and also empowerment of their fam friends and family to be able to look for things early in the process, because if you can have a healthy eye, you can have a healthy eye. Let ask a question. Sure. We always ask Jerry down there, your, your CEO, we ask him 
for articles for our newsletter. You've never written an article on that for our newsletter, have you? No, I've not been asked, to be honest. How about, can you tell Jerry that I ask you to write an article about the healthy eye? I would be happy to do that. This is the kind of thing, this is why we have a newsletter, Doctor. That newsletter, when I, you, you asked me a question about how, what our area of coverage is. And right now, we are focusing on trying to make this, we're trying to take the, the Space Coast Government Channel folks, the Government Channel, TV Channel, and sort of make it the hub of an information program that anybody, any place can tune in to, the, to our shows and see all these shows that we have on television. And, 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 and the beauty about that is that once they see it on, on the government uh, channel and they go back to our website, and they'll see all the articles that are written in the newsletter. They'll see the article that you're going to oh, write great. about the Healthy Eye Initiative. This is what's important. This is why, this to me is how you raise awareness. You have, you know, I've talked to uh, you, I've talked to Dr. McManus, I've talked to uh, Dr. Palmer, I've uh, talked to six, Dr. Uh, Mandizi. Uh, all these programs, they contain information that's going to be good always. It's not going to change. Absolutely. And the more people that become better informed about what they should do, you know, let's go back to the question about the eye exam. How does one at 25 years of age, what do they do to say, who did they go to to say, I need an eye exam? Okay. Where do they go? That's a very good question. Um, there are, it's a little bit complicated, but the, the here's a simple solution to the, an eye exam, Not first of all, not all eye exams are created equal. However, many, many people have vision insurance. So their vision insurance will often dictate which eye doctor they should go to. We have very, very good eye doctors in this area that are optometrists uh, that are great at uh, being sort of the primary care guys through the vision plans. And so my recommendation to the audience would be, if you have an eye plan, if you have a vision plan where you get a free exam once a year, use it, go for it. Because getting that first eye exam, that screening exam is super critical. The other component of this is you know, I, I was invited to speak at the uh, organization of all the optometrists in Brevard County just recently. And, and one of the things I discussed with them kind of goes to the first question they asked me about, you know, the, the plan of prevention. And that is one of the things that I always tell my optometry partners and colleagues is if you see something that looks odd, send it to us. Let us take a look at it. I rather tell you, Joe, the changes in your eye are nothing to worry about. Go home. You're fine then for somebody to assume that they're normal and you sit on it for a year or two and then the damage is already done. So part of that is also education on the patient's part to say, okay, I'm going to get an eye exam, but if they find something unusual on that eye exam or if the doctor isn't sure, then say, you know, doctor, send me to a specialist. Let's have them take a look at it because a lot of these changes present very early in the process. And if you can catch them early, you can prevent blindness. Well, that's it. when I did a show on glaucoma and uh, cataract surgery with Dr. McManus, he said much the same thing as you're saying. Uh, you know, uh, detection and prevention are, are, are key elements in anything. It's just like detecting, uh, I had a, a, a dissecting, ascending and descending aorta. Oh, wow. I mean, they couldn't detect it. It just happened. Right. Uh, it was only because God wanted me to be here that I lived through that because Absolutely. my surgeon said to me that I split open from here all the way up, all the way down. And the guy that put me back together, he was one of the doctors that helped invent the glue process wow. for putting the, the aorta back to better by gluing oh, and sewing it. So we learn a lot by uh, television shows and we, we learn about what we could do and what we can't do. But one of your specialties is uh, macular degeneration. Um, I know people with macular degeneration, and I've watched them. What are some of the things that people can do to detect, or can you detect it early through the gene? If so, uh, what are some of the uh, uh, what are some of the risk factors? What are some of the things that our audience should know about macular degeneration? Detecting, prevention, cure, taking care of what you can do. That's sure. your field. 
Absolutely. So let's talk about that. You hit the nail right on the head. Macular degeneration is a genetic condition. That means that if you have it, you will pass it on to your children and you inherit it from your parents. There are some blood tests available now that look for the genes that code for macular degeneration. However, some of these tests are unreliable. The FDA has not approved these tests because they have not gone through the full rigorous testing. And so you have to be careful about getting a genetic test done that may not be 100% accurate. And the, the danger is that if it's a false positive or false negative, it can either give you a false sense of security or it can give you a, a false you know, scare that you have something. So knowing the family history is important. The first thing I, tell, I would tell the audience is talk to your mom and dad, talk to other members of your family and find out, hey, do we have any of this in our family? The funny thing about eye disease is that I have patients who tell me, doctor, you know, my somebody in my family went blind. I don't know why they went blind. Nobody knows why. Maybe it was many years ago. But it's important to know that somebody went blind from some condition. Because even if you don't know the name of the disease, your good eye doctor could figure it out based on what your symptoms are. So it's important to know that. So first is obviously education. Find out from your family what the other thing. The other thing is, if you have a family history of some eye disease, if you know that somebody in your family has gone blind, get an eye exam, a good comprehensive eye exam. Uh, the American Academy of Ophthalmology recommends everybody get an annual exam if you have an eye condition that's vision threatening or if you know somebody in your family that has it. So that's a good reason to get an eye exam. So those are the two very important steps to getting started. And optometrists can give you that exam. Absolutely they can, yes. Um, I don't even know if you know this or not, but let's say a person doesn't have a, a, a vision plan or anything else, and they went in and they went to an optometrist and said, I need an eye exam. What would it cost? Basic um, ballpark. You know, I think that usually uh, eye exams, a basic comprehensive dilated examination, should not cost any more than $100. Usually I've seen them between $50 to $100 for an eye exam. Um, if you look at the sort of the reimbursements that insurance companies provide, it's in that ballpark range as well. So a basic eye exam with nothing extensive done, just a screening exam should be affordable for most people. And in fact, a lot of places now bundle that eye exam with a pair of glasses or you get a discount if you get a pair of glasses with them. Use every opportunity you can to get an eye exam. Um, one of the other things though is important is make sure that it is a good eye exam. Make sure that you get a report and you know, ask the doctor for the report and you know take that report with you so that you know what was said. Interesting um, article I read a few years ago, Joe, this is an interesting thing. Patients only hear half of what the doctor says to them. I've Be heard this in play. Right? And so that's why it's important. One of the things that I do is I give people, I give patients a little report card that they can take home with them because I know that when I talk to them for five, eight, 10 minutes about a condition, when they hear something they don't like hearing, or if I say blindness, their brain stops listening. I know, I know. Right? And so make sure if they go to get an eye exam, I would tell the patients, grab, you know, have them give you uh, your records, carry those records with you so that you can, and then research the topic yourself. They can go to your videos and look up things that they have done. The internet is so full of information uh, and good information at, at that. Uh, there are resources like the American Academy of Ophthalmology, uh, the American Optometric Association. There are a lot of good websites out there that have pertinent information. So I encourage people, once you get an eye exam, that's not it. Go do your own homework, research, talk to your family members, see if this is something that anybody else in your family has. Then that helps you, that empowers you sort of to take lead. And I think people do better when they take care of their own health care and they, they take yeah. responsibility. And just like you, what you and I are talking about, that same person will think nothing about taking his date or his wife out and each have a prime rib dinner, a couple of glasses of wine and, and a dessert and a tip and it'll come close to $75. I agree. 100%, I agree with you 100%. We, we're like a penny wise and pound foolish. We don't take care of our eyes. I, I think that probably care and treatment of our eyes, unless we really have a problem, is probably uh, a, a really common thing for most people. We just, we, just don't, we just don't think about it. The other thing, question here, according to the question here, is that uh, since diabetes is a large risk factor for loss on vision, what are some of the latest treatment options for diabetic patients? I know Dr. McManus talked a little bit about uh, 
the uh, glaucoma and, and diabetes, but how about macular degeneration and retina stuff? Uh, how, how, does that, how does that affect what you're talking about? So diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, as we had talked about a little earlier, it's a preventable cause of blindness. So we can prevent it. And we're getting very good at saving vision from diabetes. And here's how the latest treatments work. First, detection, as we talked about earlier. Go in, get checked. If any changes are noted in the eye, then the patient should be referred to a retina specialist like myself for further evaluation. What we do then is we look at the blood supply of the eye. As I explained earlier, diabetes damages blood vessels. So over time, those blood vessels become smaller and smaller. Well, as we talked about the eye, the retina is part of the brain, our body needs oxygen. So when the, uh, the body gets deprived of oxygen, it starts to fight back. And the amazing thing about our eyes and our whole body, Joe, is that we have an innate ability to survive. We want to survive. Our eye wants to survive. Our brain wants to survive. So it'll do what it needs to do to protect itself. And one of those things that it does is it tries to grow its own set of blood vessels to resupply the oxygen into the tissue that's not getting oxygen. The problem with the eye, that's great for the heart and lungs and other organs, but it's not good for the eyes because the retina, those abnormally created blood vessels actually cause damage. They cause bleeding and they permanently damage the nerve cells. And that's what we really want to prevent uh, in diabetic patients. All the new treatments that are available right now include injections in the eye. The injections have changed or revolutionized eye care uh, for diabetics, certainly in a very, very positive way. Um, <clears throat> I recently went to a conference, the American Academy of Ophthalmology, and they presented a lot of new information about injections. These injections have been around for about eight or 10 years now, and they work really well. In fact, they work so well that I've had patients who were losing vision, and over time, when they get these monthly or bi-monthly injections, these patients will actually start to get improvement, not only in their vision, which we never promise because we can't guarantee it, but they actually start to get less damage to the retina. And this has been shown over and over again in many different studies. So that's critical. Okay. I know, I know a person that uh, has, sp she has spots and blind spots in the eye. And the, uh, their doctor started giving them injections in the eye. But... Um, it, it, it's, they still have the problem with the uh, the blurs in the eye, and is that in the retina? Is there a, what when you give a shot? Do you, a shot is it, where do you give the shot? In the retina or in the? Uh, it's a good question. Um, we actually don't give the shot in the retina, as retina is not a repairable tissue. It's a very delicate tissue. It's the sort of the photographic film of our eye. We can't puncture a hole in it. So. What we do is we have a very specific area of your eye just outside of the, the colored part of your eye on the white part of the eye. It's a very specific zone through which we can place a needle inside the eye and release the medicine in the vitreous gel of the eye. That medicine then will make its way to the retina and will start working in that retina. The advantage of doing that, Joe, is that what, by placing the medicine in the vitreous gel, we have now created the environment that the retina bathes in in a way that it will protect the retina. So the injections are actually given in the vitreous gel of the eye and not in the retina itself. And what does a shot do? Very good. Now, there are many types of shots. So let's talk about macular degeneration and diabetics. Okay. There's a group of injections available. The Avastin, Lucentis, Ilea are the three main ones that we use. These injections work the same way whether it's macular degeneration or diabetes. And the way these injections work is they basically inhibit the signals that create abnormal, that are necessary to create abnormal blood vessels. It's called VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. Now, this chemical VEGF that is naturally found in our bodies, everywhere in our body, it's an important chemical. It's necessary to maintain the, our heart, our blood vessels, but when it's overly expressed in the eye because the eye is starving for oxygen from diabetes or macular degeneration, then it causes abnormalities. It causes excess blood vessels to grow. And what these injections do is they block that signal and keep the body from growing these abnormal excess blood vessels. And that's how it saves vision and keeps the fluid from leaking 
in wet macular degeneration and diabetes. So that's something that can be started sooner. If it was, if, 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 if genes, despite the fact you get positive, negative signals and everything else, by, by doing a simple blood test, you can tell a lot about the genes that exist and you, you can tell potential problem areas that once you detect that side of the problem, it might lead you to something that is known in medicine and could help prevent something. So what I'm hearing you say, Dr. Prashnam, is that the sooner a person gets an eye exam, the better off they are. Absolutely. I have one question here. What advice would you give to a person whose vision is just simply not as sharp as uh, they think it should be? So, very good question. If you look at the eye, so the first thing is we talked about a good comprehensive eye exams. So this is how, I'll sort of give you a summary of how to think about blurry okay. vision. I'm watching the time, you have 53 seconds. Okay. So there are many structures that the light enters through your eye and hits before it gets to the retina. Any one of those structures can have a problem and can give you blurry vision. You would know what the source of the blurry vision is. So this way, a comprehensive exam can look at the, a physician can look at the eye and decide which structure is damaged and then can design a custom treatment based on which structure is being damaged, whether it's a cataract or diabetes damage in the retina. So the simple answer is get a good comprehensive eye exam. So what you're doing is constructing a good financial plan for care of the eye. Absolutely true. Or an estate plan for the it's eye. It's a great investment. Vision is a great it's, investment. It's, you hit it. It's an investment. It's an investment in doing the right thing to protect right. yourself. Thank you, Dr. Ed. Today, I, I've learned a lot myself, and I hope our viewers have, have learned as much as I have today. Thank and you. I, I look forward to the show being played on the government channel. And I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of Helping Seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Burrard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.